Good afternoon. I am Paula Fontana, Vice President of Strategic Programming Initiatives with the National Black MBA Association. And thank you so much for joining us for another crucial conversation around reaching racial equity. So last year, uh, particularly when the world watched the senseless killing of George Floyd, we saw an increased global visibility around racial injustice and the heightened awareness of the systemic inequities that exist in our nation. So press releases from a plethora of companies and institutions really placing a stake in the ground on where they stood on the issue of racism soon followed hashtag Black Lives Matter. So to quote our president and CEO, Joe Handy, how do we now get beyond the hashtag? So as an association, it is our mission to lead in the creation of educational wealth building and growth opportunities for Blacks throughout all stages of their career. And so getting to the point where we reach racial equity is really mission critical and the baseline for our members to be able to attain those opportunities for which they seek, as well as for the corporations to be successful. So to move the needle, we have called on our partners to commit to the difficult and long-term work of improving equity and opportunity within their respective organizations and really highlighting best practices that lead to solutions for other organizations as they navigate their journeys and paths through intentional, deliberate steps to widen the road of opportunity for all. So I am so delighted to have a conversation with Pfizer this afternoon, whose commitment to our membership throughout all stages of that pipeline that I talked about really led me to take a closer look at what was going on in their internal culture. And it became evident that we needed to shine a light on the great work that they were doing. So joining me for this conversation is Dana Stevenson. She leads the diversity efforts on the corporate citizenship team at Fiserv. She is passionate about creating inclusive pathways that celebrate the originality of all cultures, diverse backgrounds, and ethnicities. And it is clear throughout all the discussions that I've had with Dana that she knows the value of diversity and the impact of an inclusive culture can have on the organization. Dana, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Absolutely, I'm happy to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you and you look gorgeous. And I love the the uh, ode to Africa, if you will, in your background. Thank you, celebrating Black History Month. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's just warm up with getting um, our listeners to know a little bit more about you and your journey and really uh, let us know why racial equity is an important topic for you on a personal level. Absolutely. Um, when I think about my start, um, with racial equity. I mean, I have more than 15 years in HR and talent acquisition within that space. I'm a wife, a mother of three little people, and I strive every day to create an environment where they're celebrated, loved, valued, and accepted for who they are. Um, I really want to ensure they're able to be authentically who they are and designed to strive for excellence in all that they do. Racial equity has been a really important part of my career because beginning of a journey, as I mentioned, was in talent acquisition. And so specifically, I focused in technology recruitment. And there are huge gaps in that space when it comes to diversity. So my passion for this has been a long time coming, and I'm really happy for the opportunity to share more about that today. Awesome. So I love the reference of your three beautiful children uh, growing to authentically be who they were designed to be, right? Absolutely. So let's sort of um, draw that comparison in the culture of corporate. Corporate. Okay. Um, Black Americans, you know, make up roughly 12% of our U.S. population. So proportionately represented when it comes to entry level jobs. But then when we start talking about manager, under, underrepresented. And even more so, um, even more acutely so at that senior level VP and SVP level. So tell me what strategies have Pfizer put in place to improve diversity across all levels of your organization, including senior leadership, so that all employees can really feel 
authentically who they were designed to be and celebrated for who they are. Absolutely. Um, Fiserv has really decided to do the work when it comes to moving the needle. And through our Forward Together plan, we took a pledge and a commitment, and this holds us really accountable to continue efforts around DEI. We believe our actions speak louder than our words. And to that, we really support our associates and our communities. And we'll do that through four key areas. We'll improve diversity across all levels of our organization. We will increase associate awareness, education, and participation in diversity and inclusive programs. We'll invest $50 million to support black and minority owned businesses through our back to business plan. And we will support community groups with missions focused on human rights, racial equity, and social justice. As an organization, we're committed to diversity at all levels, which is why we're requiring diverse slate of candidates for our leadership positions. We're focusing on inclusive leadership and offering more than 150 training programs for every single associate worldwide. Our employee resource groups also play a huge part in that and are a forum for our associates and allies to exchange ideas, support each other, and elevate professional development. So we're really committed to ensuring that racial equity is something that's top of mind for us as an organization. Wow. Okay. You dropped so many good nuggets there. So let's, um, let's unpack it a little bit. Sure. So forward together. Love that. Um, First, you talked about the diverse candidates in leadership positions. I've heard some companies say that they have trouble finding diverse senior level talent. So how have you all been successful in finding them? Or do you um, water the grass where you are? Do you groom them from within? <laughs> Absolutely. We definitely water our grass. Um, that's a really great question. We truly believe that our associates are the best part of our organization and we have to grow, nurture and promote and really stretch our internal talent. And we do that a lot. Um, when companies really allow their associates and team members to get uncomfortable, which is something that a lot of us are not comfortable with, mm -hmm. we're really able to see their impact. And as I think about my journey moving into the role where I am today, um, I had to build some key relationships and get really uncomfortable outside of my comfort zone and create an opportunity to transform my career. And so with that, I was promoted out of talent acquisition into the role that I am today. And I think it's extremely important to partner with diverse organizations like the National Black MBA Association and others to really leverage the tremendous talent that's out there. Um, our strategy is definitely a mix of growing, promoting, and stretching our internal associates, mm -hmm. but also leveraging our community partners and partnering with diverse organizations to continue to attract diverse talent. That's great. That's great. So um, more of the unpacking, right? So you, you use the terminology inclusive leadership. So earlier when I was um, introducing the segment, I talked about um, the systemic problems that we have. So realizing that systemic changes within an organization have to start from the top. How do you as a senior leader and how do other senior leaders communicate the need for diversity and really encourage that equity within the organization? Absolutely. Um, it's so true that these decisions have to come from the top down. That's how they're sustainable. And so when we think about the top of our organization really embracing all levels of leadership and having that conversation, we need to have a more diverse and inclusive workforce. That goes back to our Forward Together plan, increasing it at all levels of the organization. Um, we really need to listen and start having those real conversations. And racial equity has been a really difficult conversation, especially with the murder of George Floyd and the inequities that were happening. And we've got to really be willing to have the tough conversations and allow us to hear what other associates are experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, then we need to act. That's truly what I love about our Forward Together commitment is that it's birthed from the social unrest and from the murder of George Floyd, being able to say, hey, we've got to come together. And a lot of people were shocked by what happened, but we know those things existed. And so being able to bring that to the forefront, um, we had coffee chats with our senior leaders. Our Black Leadership Council, ERG, hosted some sessions with our CHRO and CEO saying, we want to have these conversations. It affects how we come to work. And so being able to do that, we were able to increase awareness and education and participation in DNI programming. Um, 
really having more diverse slates of candidates and leadership positions helps us to have those conversations and be represented at every level. So I think when you have leaders who really take the time to listen and understand, I may not know where you're coming from. I may not have experienced this myself, but you matter and these things matter to us. It makes a huge difference. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is just having the, our ERGs, our employee resource groups are a safe space to really share those conversations. You know, we're celebrating Black History Month right now. And we had a number of events this month and some of them, we had our allies, people who may not be African-American or people of color coming just to learn what it's like, what we're going through, what are some of the wins and the challenges that we face to be able to be more inclusive. So those opportunities really allow us to get our leaders involved and get our associates really interested in building and in building more inclusive um, teams within our organization. That's great. Um, actions absolutely speak louder than words. And um, for those of you who are listening, if you have questions for Dana Pfizer, please put them in the chat and we will get to as many as we can during this conversation. Um, so Dana, you spoke a lot about um, the actions that you were taking. And so let's go back to the beginning when we were talking about that desire for your children to feel celebrated and valued and appreciated. How does Fiserv um, provide not only diversity, equity, and inclusion, but belonging or having that support within work? How do you do that? Absolutely. I love this one because everyone wants to belong. You want to know that where you are matters, where you are in your journey matters, and there's someone there to listen. And so we create belonging by really supporting and creating and fostering an environment where our associates can bring their whole selves to work and be celebrated. And as I talked before, one of the ways is through our employee resource groups. You know, they offer support, they offer a safe place, networking, education, allyship, and really are the background of how we have these conversations. So we have eight employee resource groups 34 sites, 10 countries, and more than 6,900 members. And that includes our Asian Leadership Council, which earlier this month, we also celebrated Chinese New Year and Lunar New Year. I didn't know enough about that. And it was an amazing experience. And that was a global virtual celebration. Then, as I mentioned, we're also celebrating Black History Month. Earlier this earlier this week, we had our Rep Your HBCU and Divine Nine event. Yeah. And we had a roll call and all HBCUs and Divine Nine. And we had, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience to celebrate. And also today we had our finale event and we had leaders represented from all over the organization showing diversity and leadership. And it was amazing. We have a Hispanic Leadership Council. We also have a Disability Leadership Council. Mm -hmm. um, we have military. We have women in leadership who will be celebrating Women's History Month next month. Um, LGBTQ plus and young professionals. We really want to make sure everybody feels welcome and they're able to have a safe place to talk. You know, our employee resource groups are really a forum for our associates and allies to exchange ideas, get involved in their communities, support and champion causes together, supporting each other, learning more about each other, and really celebrating the fact that we're more alike than we are different. Right. And it serves as a way for our allies to educate themselves and really have a safe place to ask those really tough questions they may not be aware of. That's, that's, that's the key right there. So, um, it sounds like you guys are doing amazing things. Before I open up the um, the chat for questions, um, what more could you be doing? What else is there for you as Pfizer? That's a really great point. I mean, I think what we can continue to do is get involved and and really get everyone to better understand how we can be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know representation matters. We know that having diverse teams has a trickle down effect and allowing us to, to really embrace diversity in our conversations and our boardrooms, that really impacts decisions. So I think one of the things that we can continue to do is get involved in our communities, um, continue to build diverse partnerships, continue to provide training and education for our leaders, um, continue to, to allow our employee resource groups to lead those conversations. Those are the things that we can continue to do because it's working. And we, I mean, we have been listed as Fortune's um, 
best workplaces eight years in a row. You know, so having those opportunities, it really matters that we're allowing everyone to feel comfortable bringing their full selves to work. Right. And that's, I mean, that's the benefit that of diversity, right? And of that belonging to retaining that talent. So um, questions for Dana, for Pfizer. So Christine would love to hear how Pfizer leverages your ERGs. Sometimes uh, companies put the onus on the ERGs to fix DNI, if you will. That's a really good question. Um, we don't ask them to fix DNI. We ask them to allow everyone to have a place. And the, the great thing about our ERGs is that they're employee led. So in our associates lead those conversations. They're helping us to understand. I mean, when we had our Rep Your HBCU event this month, it was because we decided that was an amazing opportunity for us to see how many HBCUs are represented in our organization. And then we decided, you know what, let's also include the Divine Nine. And boy, did we have an amazing event. And it's all about being able to say this matters to us. Let's do it. And so ERGs are really aligned to help to bridge some of those gaps and to have that safe place. When we talked before about um, the murder, the murder of George Floyd, that conversation have being had in an ERG environment, everyone there knew what we were going through. And then having allies join and say, hey, we want to learn more about this because this affects you. And so having that safe space is very different than calling a friend that has no idea what you're going through because they're not, you know, they're not African American, they're not of color, they haven't experienced those things. So our ERGs really help to highlight the ways we can support each other because we are so alike and we have so many of the similar things that really matter to us. That's great. And you said there were eight ERGs, is that correct? Absolutely, there are eight. Wow. So that's incredible. So next question is Hi, Dana. I love that you touched on showing up for each other. I'm a very strong advocate of that. How does Fiserv have any formal mentor programs? What formal mentor programs do you have? So we do have formal mentor programs, um, but we also really want mentorship to be um, kind of organic. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want our associates to find the opportunity to engage and meet with people. And, you know, our ERGs also provide some of that too, you know, having leader series where you are able to learn more about what a particular business does, being able to share experiences. And then you may decide to reach out to someone because you learn more about what they do. We also have a job shadowing program where you can spend some time learning about a new career. Um, one of the things that I did before I moved into my role today, um, I reached out to a number of different people. I thought their role sounded exciting. So I decided, let me just spend some time with them. And sometimes through those experiences, you may say, hmm, that sounds interesting. It's not for me. And that's the beauty of being able to provide that. Then from that, you may have a mentor because you realize, hey, this is where I want to go. This person was happy to help me. And I really enjoy the work with them. Let me reach out to them. And so we have trainings and our ERGs also help to facilitate training on what is a mentor? What is a sponsor? What are the difference between the two? And how do you now move the needle forward? So that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. And um, I may or may not have heard about a story about somebody reaching out to you directly in your roles and saying, hey, can you help me? Right. That doesn't that happen often. Absolutely. Um, when when you really take the time to show your passion around what you do, it's evident that people can see that. And so I've had people reach out to me and say, can you help me better understand? And I'll always my my advice always, especially when deciding to move to a new role, is ask questions, get involved, mm -hmm. um, spend some time with the people in those roles so you can better understand what their day to day looks like. And even in my role today, I reached out to a few leaders and I, I wanted to know more about what I can do in this space, what I can do to make sure that I am building more diverse teams. And so with that, I was able to, you know, have this opportunity just from reaching out and having that connection and asking, help me better understand, I don't know everything. And so a lot of times it's really that too, saying, I don't know, but I'm happy to help. And when we do that, when we make that next step in our career, it's our duty to then mm -hmm. help someone else. 
And so when people reach out to me, I'm happy to say, yeah, I did this because of this. I'm going to give you some of the pointers because it's helped me and I want to help you. So it's important. That's absolutely right. The collective community, right? Absolutely. Um, Quentin asks, how did Fiserv senior leaders put their social capital to use, put their thumb on the scale to move the inclusion ball forward? Absolutely. So, you know, we talked about our forward together commitment. We talked about how we are really making sure we have a diverse slate in every single um, leadership role. We're making sure that our leaders look at candidates and really have more options. Um, the other piece of that is with our 50 with our with our 50 million dollars we're investing in small back, black minority owned businesses mm -hmm. we're saying we know that this is happening we know that there's social injustice we know that there's racial inequities we know that covid has affected black and minority owned businesses more than it's affected anyone else we've been giving out grants ever since last year to small minority owned businesses to really help them during covid not only have we been giving grants we've been doing sessions on entrepreneurship helping to better understand how do you pivot during this time? How do you change your sales process? How do you become a contactless payment organization? You know, there are lots of ways that our, our organization is really investing because we know that this matters. And as, as Paula just mentioned, you know, that collective piece, we want to do well while doing good. We also want to make sure that what we're doing is impactful for our communities because we live there. I live in a community and so do you. So if we're not helping out our communities, then we are not moving the needle. That's great. That's awesome. Um, next question that we have, does Fiserv have KPIs or metrics linked to your DEI journey? And how do you keep it visible for your organization? This is, I love this question. Absolutely. I mean, we do have we do have KPIs and we have a way to track and make sure that we're looking at the numbers. And sometimes that's a difficult conversation, right? Looking at the numbers, realizing that you need more work. But I think that's how you make a change. When you look at building out a DNI strategy or a DEI strategy, it starts with being realistic. You know, we don't have enough representation in senior leaders at the top. Yeah, it stings. So next steps, what do we do, right? So being able to have those conversations and really being able to say, all right, this is what we're going to do. That's where our forward together plan came from. We decided and we realized, you know what, we don't have enough senior leaders that are diverse. How do we do that? Community partners, diverse associations and organizations are community partners. That's what we're going to do to make sure that we're doing that. We also, the same thing with our with our back to business plan, we realize we may not be helping businesses enough, especially during COVID. So what do we do? You know, those come from K KPIs and metrics and really listening to what's happening around us. So that's a really great question. Absolutely. So I heard if you can't, if you're not tracking it, you can't change it. And then Absolutely. after you've tracked it and you see that there's an issue, then having that courageous conversation and figuring out how you can fix it and move forward. That's Absolutely. Awesome. And the reality is you can't know where you're going if you don't even know where you are. You know, you I mean, it's just like having a map. The map doesn't tell you anything unless you know where you are. So building a roadmap and getting an understanding of where you sit today helps you make those really tough decisions to go back to your team and say, hey, team, I know that we thought we were moving the needle. We're not. Mm -hmm. Now, we, how do we move forward? So that really matters. It really does. That's great. Next question from um, Augustine. Hi, Dana. What recommendations can you provide to expand the HR channel in the DNI area of organizations that don't have it? Great question, Augustine. That is a great question, Augustine. Um, one of the things that I, I believe really matters is being able to attend sessions and learn more. I mean, the since I've been in this space, I've been attending as many sessions as I can to learn more about DE&I, not only because I want to make sure I'm making an impact here, but I want to see what other strategies other companies are doing too, because at this time, we've all had to pivot, right? We've all had to say, maybe we're not doing enough. Maybe we need to do more. So what does that look like? And being able to share ideas in a community, getting onto forums, getting into conversations just like this mm -hmm. allows us to see what other companies are doing and say, hmm, I might need to try that or might need to look more into that. And I think those are the ways that we really help to move that needle and also help other organizations because 
you know, there's a question earlier about ERGs. How do you leverage them? You know, there are lots of ways. There are BRGs, which are business resource groups, right? There are lots of ways to leverage, but we learn more collectively when we really spend time talking and listening to each other. That's great. Thank you for the question. Any more? I know we're almost out of time. No more questions. Okay, I have, uh, oh, all right. Just slipped it in, Sean. How effective is shadowing in a virtual environment now that we've had to switch everything on us <laughs> the past year? How effective is shadowing? Um, I honestly don't think it's changed much when I think about shadowing. I mean, I honestly think that we are more engaged um, when it comes to shadowing now because we are in a virtual environment. So you can shadow anyone from anywhere. You know, you can reach out to someone in another state, another country to really dig deeper. And I think it really has opened up the opportunity and given more access. Um, and I think shadowing is such a great way for you not only to learn more about your organization, but also learn more about ways that you can get involved. Um, as I mentioned, um, earlier, one of the things that when we think about our ERGs, when you get into, when you start to really get into allyship and getting into other organization, piece of your organization, you start to realize that maybe your scope is much smaller than you really thought it was. And so being able to really then shadow, you know, I, I saw you on this session. I would love to learn more about you. Would you spend some time with me? Those conversations become much more, um, much easier because of this virtual environment, because we may not have been exposed to certain groups and businesses and people because we were focused in our office or focused in certain locations. So now you have a broad, a broad spectrum of people that you can reach out to because you have this virtual environment. So use it to your best ability. That's great. One last question. Mm, mm, mm. Frank. How do you measure diversity when it comes to revenue, market share, or both? That's a really great question. So do you know, um, there are metrics and there's a lot of research that shows that diverse companies outperform non-diverse companies by more than 36%. And one of the one of the really cool things you think about Gen Z, they're actually the most diverse generation in history. So if companies aren't willing to get on board with diversity, equity, inclusion, they're missing out on a number of impactful leaders in that generation. And when you think about moving the needle, if you're not able, and if we already know, a lot of times <laughs> I think about this with my kids, if I tell them no, I don't think that's a good idea. They're gonna come up with another way to come around with a different idea that looks just like the other <laughs> one packaged completely differently, but it's the same. And so when you think about disrupting industries, we can all think about conversations. We've said, oh, that can't be done. I mean, think about computers. Whoever thought you'd hold a computer in the palm of your hand probably was told it's not possible. When we don't allow diversity of thought and backgrounds and cultures and ethnicities, we're really missing out on tremendous opportunities to really drive revenue and become better than we are. So I mean, that's the reason. Diversity is the reason. That's great. So uh, it looks like we are short on time. Um, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have this discussion with you is because every time we talk, you always ask, what else? What more can we do? How more can we help? And so for organizations that are listening in and are just getting started on their equity journey, what last tool or piece of advice would you provide? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it has to do with really having the conversation, um, building diverse partnerships, digging deeper into the relationships that you have, asking tough questions. Um, I think it also goes back to the roadmap, looking at that roadmap and saying, OK, where do we want to go? Where are we today? Where do we want to go? Review your hiring, your retention, your voluntary and involuntary attrition, promotions, internal mobility. I mean, we didn't even talk about pay equity, right? right. There are so many ways that we can move the needle and you just have to get started. Pick one or two things, look at a group and say, you know what, we need to move the needle here and then start moving forward. Um, one last thing I wanna say is, I mean, diversity matters. When you think about the glass ceilings that were broken by Madam Vice President Kamala Harris and, mm -hmm 
and having Barack Obama as a as a president. I mean, those change the game for people of color, you know, for us to be able to see. My seven-year-old daughter wrote a story about being the vice president because she saw someone who looked like her breaking barriers, black, first black woman, first black, first, first Asian, first, you know, first of everything. You right. know, so many things we're able to see. And like I mentioned before, diversity really is the key because we can't escape it. So mm -hmm. we need to embrace it and just start, start the conversation. I love that. That is uh, the perfect way to end. Dana, thank you so much for this conversation and these tools uh, to move people forward. And thank you, Pfizer, for being an incredible partner. Thank you all for tuning in and engaging with us this afternoon. And as you continue on your own racial equity conversations within your own organizations, remember, if you can't fly, then you run. If you can't run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl, and whatever you do, keep moving forward. Until next time, move forward. Thank you.